Good evening. I'm composer Howard Werschel, and this is Sound and Dialogue. My guest for this evening is composer Dick Robinson, who is well known over the world and in the country as uh, an electronic music composer and someone very knowledgeable about electronic techniques and use of computer music. Uh, Dick, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your background? Well, I was uh, received my mus musical education in Chicago, and uh, my first interest as a composer was uh, focused on the second Viennese school, composers Schoenberg and Webern in particular, and later Stockhausen and Boulez, and that's very typical of my generation, I guess. But then uh, when Cage, when I first learned about Cage, I became very interested also in an almost opposite direction, and that involves indeterminacy. And then I ended up being primarily interested, and still am, in a fusion between those two directions, or to use Cage's favorite word, an inner penetration of the two directions. <laughs> is the software you're using here. Yes. Which is It's what? called uh, M, just the capital. Okay, and one uh, piece of software that can do this is the software you're using here. Yes. Which is It's what? called uh, M, just the capital letter M. And it was uh, invented or, or written by uh, Joel Chatterby, a New York composer. As the determinant part, of this, I have pre-recorded a, a C major scale, something that you can say exists before the composition begins. And I'll just play that to show the starting point. Uh, then I can cop, that's say, voice one or part one, I can copy that same scale into three other voices and then I can transpose each scale independently to another key and that's what you heard. So, for instance, this is the original scale and I can transpose it up a half step for instance if I wanted to or anywhere else. And so uh, the system I've got up is got set up now is that each of the four scales will be at a, in a different key, a whole step apart. And it sounds like that, which is not very useful. Then you can impose a, te a different tempo on each of the scales. And then you get something very chaotic sounding, but still determinate. So this <laughs> although it's determinate, it comes off as sounding ra random. If you listen to it enough, you begin to per perceive a repeating regular pattern. But it's still a C major scale, and you can go back to the regular C major scale. Now, when you did that uh, cyclic uh, selection, mm -hmm. 
uh, it selected one cycle of random notes and repeated that. Yeah. Uh, if you were to select it again, say at the same number, I think you had it set on two, would it choose a different cycle or right. the same cycle? And this is the this is another selection, but it's uh, also also will be. <laughs> tempo uh, by selecting a wide range. Here I've got a, a range of tempos from quarter note equals 40 to quarter note equals 52. And you can either conduct these changes or the computer itself will conduct them. Shifting. And it's that uh, it's that dot on the grid that yeah. is actually controlling it. Yeah. And I think what I find is the most useful random process is, is a process whereby you can randomly eliminate a certain number, a certain percentage of the notes in each pattern. Uh, it's called note density. Uh, for voice one, for each voice, all the notes are played 100%. But suppose in the first voice I wanted only half of the notes to play, about 50%. Uh, then which notes would be omitted would be a, random, a matter of random choice. But notes makes it a, something interesting and fresh and then I could do say 25% of the third of the second voice and a different amount for each one have say one going all the time Thank you. 